questions. So I think we're good. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any either. So we're going to start with the academic portion. So um, what we're going to try to do in this piece, uh, Dula Castro and I will go back and forth and try to tackle some of the pertinent issues. Again, if you do have any questions or concerns, please put them into the chat room. Um, we'll be monitoring the chat room and answering any questions you may have. Yes, and I do want to reiterate, this is an opportunity for all of you to, you know, make sure that you feel comfortable going into the fall semester. This is your chance to ask questions. If you don't feel comfortable putting it in the full group chat, you can always message me privately. Well, there's nothing coming in yet, so I can talk a little bit about the plan as far as um, our office and what I'll be doing. So for those of you who aren't aware, I have been available this summer for virtual appointments, and the same will be true in the fall semester. If you use Run for Success to book your appointments, you'll actually see all of my availability. Um, I'm also available through email, and we really do want to make sure that we're as streamlined as possible. Um, you know, and making sure that we offer as many appointment time slots as I can um, so that you all feel as though you are connected, that you're getting your questions answered. And so if you ever are having difficulty finding an appointment, just let me know. I want to make myself available to all of you. And I do recognize that in this announcement that there's a lot of questions that are coming up. You know, it, it's a big transition, not only as students, but also for staff and faculty as well. You know, so it's not something that I don't think anybody has ever dealt with. So, you know, we're here for you. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I am available. Okay, so I haven't gotten any questions yet. Dean Gibbs, do you want to talk a little bit about the course format? Sure, 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 sure. So the course format, as you all know, um, we're going to be remote this academic semester. And what remote means is this, you'll either be in your classes synchronously or what's called asynchronously. Synchronously will be where you will meet with your instructor and your classmates on the assigned date and time as per the schedule of classes. So let's say if you have a class Tuesday from 2.30 to 5.20, you will be expected to um, participate in your class during that time. Um, all undergraduate classes are on Blackboard, so you will uh, log into Blackboard, go into your your uh, your class site, and participate that way. Um, asynchronous courses are a little bit different. They're a little bit more flexible in that you're not meeting on a prescribed day and time. You may have assignments that, let's say, are due every Monday. You may have discussion posts um, and lectures that you have to observe by Monday. Um, it's going to be very imperative that you. Um, work closely with us to make sure that you know if you're in an asynchronous or synchronous class. Um, and the reason that we want you to know that is we don't want you to be confused. It is going to be a lot in the adjustment. Um, thankfully, we had the spring semester to kind of get a snapshot of what remote learning will, will look like. But this is going to be a little bit different because we're actually starting this semester remotely. So we are doing appointments all summer long. Please be heavily advised for you to make an appointment just to go through the schedule, go through your schedule of classes so that you know what um, type of learning environment that you're going to be in. We're also going to ask all of our instructors to reach out to you in advance sometime in, in August with the hopes of letting you know um, if your class is synchronous or asynchronous as well. Um, one other thing I do want to stress, just because we're moving to a, a remote learning environment, does not mean that the quality of education will drop. In fact, as like Dean Mentor was saying, because we're moving to an online environment um, and being a remote environment, we will hopefully increase our expectations so that you will be able to get access to some of our best and brightest faculty and get an in-depth knowledge of the curricular areas that we will be covering this semester. Yes, and to follow up with that, Dean Gibbs mentioned the class formats. This information is going to be made public on the Rucker schedule of classes. And this should be true for all departments. If you did have a specific question um, about the format for SPA before it's added to the Rucker schedule of classes, you can email me. I have that information. But as far as other departments go, they will be communicating 
about the format of their classes. Right now, the Office of Academic Scheduling is making the update. I think they estimated it would be done by early August. They had something like 40,000 classes to get through. So if you're seeing SPA listed as still having a physical location, that's just because the Office of Academic Scheduling didn't make the updates for us yet. Okay, so I do see we have a question coming in. So just give me one moment. Okay, so the question is in regards to the university medical insurance. So this is something I'm going to have to follow up on. Um, basically, the student wants to know, will the university be providing medical insurance? It's my understanding that they do this every semester. Um, so the same would be true, but I'm going to find out more information and I will get back to you on that. And like I said, if anybody has questions, you can put them in the chat. You can also message me privately. So we'll give everyone a minute to think about their questions. Well, okay, so I don't have any questions yet. Oh, it looks like one just came in. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the question is, will we receive a virtual syllabus for our classes? So Dean Gibbs, would you like to answer that one? Sure. So um, every class, you're going to still get your syllabus. It probably will be sent via Blackboard. You'll be able to download it um, and access your syllabus and see what your textbooks, um, what um, your, your, your dates for your assignments and any way your grades are broken down. So don't worry, you still will receive your time in time um, for you to be able to get ready for the fall semester. Yeah, and I think that's actually a really nice segue into speaking a little bit about the types of platforms that will be used. So there's two big ones used at Rutgers University Newark. The first is Canvas and the other is Blackboard. Now, let's say that you have a synchronous course. Your professor should be sharing information on how you would be virtually meeting each week. Um, I know, you know, a lot of professors you use WebEx, but the university also just acquired a contract with Microsoft Teams. Um, but all of that information is going to be specified in the syllabus and the syllabus would be posted either on Canvas or Blackboard. And I believe those are the only two that Rutgers Newark uses. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dean Gibbs, but I think okay. that's it. Yep, that is correct. We only use those two for the uh, for our platforms and most of the courses are actually um, done for the undergraduate um, program on Blackboard. Uh, our graduate courses, depending upon their um, modality may be on campus. Um, so again, it's going to be imperative that you check the schedule of classes in the memo section on the schedule of classes. It'll let you know if the class is on Blackboard or on campus. So one question that I've been getting a lot from students is, you know, they're interested to know if they want to change their schedule, at what point should they do that? So, um, what I would say as far as if you want to change your schedule, now is the perfect time. We do have classes available. Uh, again, Neela Patrick was mentioned she has plenty of appointment times available. Meet with her, have a conversation, we can go through the schedule. Even if you want to kind of map out what does this look like in a remote environment, if you need to make changes, she would be your best resource. So I heavily recommend if today is the 21st that you want to try to get this done well before the middle of August, because as we get closer to the start of the semester, classes fill up so much quicker um, and there's little movement. Like you may see some incremental change, but not much. So right now, you know, we still have uh, several more orientations to go. So it would be in your best interest to try to change your uh, schedule now. I did see a question come in. Um, when do classes start? We're going to start September 1st, which is the first Tuesday in September. Again, we're going to start September 1st, um, and I believe Labor Day is the following Monday, so we'll, we will be out, I think, with the 7th. Can you talk a little bit about what students can do if they're interested in finding an internship for the fall semester? 
Very good question. Um, so with the internships, as you know, for surface learning, it is required for you to have an internship. Um, now, we have a couple of different options for you. First and foremost, as you know, the Career Development Center has a platform called Handshake. We highly recommend that you um, create your profile on Handshake and use Handshake to look for internships. Uh, when we uh, checked today, there were 43 opportunities that were available for public and nonprofit administration majors um, for, for fall interns. So that's the first step. The second step, I would say, we are going to continue to send any and all opportunities that come our way uh, via our listserv. So continue to check your email. Um, I believe there is one that should be going out around six o'clock today. Um, there's an organization that researches public policy. They're looking for a fall intern. And so that one should go out a little later on today. Um, so there are opportunities available. I mean, granted, it is going to be different. However, this time that we are remote gives you uh, ample opportunity to update your resume. Um, meet with Mr. Hall in our writing for development center to go through your resume, do mock interviewing. Now's a great time to do mock interviewing and practice your interview skills um, and also a major area of practice your elevator pitch. The last thing that I would say is our Office of Public Engagement and Director Stroy is constantly on the hunt for opportunities that will uh, become available for our students. She advertises those through our listserv as well. So again, you know, opportunities are there. It's going to be imperative that you are very assertive during this time and don't uh, look at it as, well, we are in COVID-19, so the opportunities have dried up. That is quite the opposite. We have another question that came in. Are incoming freshmen allowed to apply for internships as well? You want to take that? Sure. Yeah. So, when we have incoming first year students, there's typically a curriculum that we try to have them follow. So my recommendation is usually that you would hold off on interning for the service learning internship class. However, I do think that there's always exceptions to that. Um, you know, if there's a good opportunity that's come up and it's tied into SPA's mission, we want you to be able to get that experience. And so I would like for us to be able to have a conversation. Curriculum wise, what we do recommend is that you take career exploration and public service first, because that course prepares students, helps them with their resume building, networking opportunities, things like that. And then you would end up eventually taking the service learning one course. Now, with that being said, for incoming first year students, you might not be aware of some of the criteria for the internship. So keep in mind that you do need to complete approximately 150 hours during the semester, but also need to make sure that it ties into SPA's mission. Um, and then there's some forms that you would need to complete. And I'm going to send that out to you uh, once we wrap up this call. I'll get that information out. Does anybody else have any questions? I have or maybe a point that you could speak to. So what would you recommend um, students to do in order to remain organized and be successful in this remote learning environment? Yes, okay, great question. So I think that one of the big things is, you know, once you know what your schedule is, have some sort of plan. Know when you're going to be studying, know when you're going to be in class. Some of you might even have jobs on top of all of this. I think the other big piece is that when you're in a virtual setting, it's so different from being in a classroom in that, you know, you might have a parent or a sibling or, you know, really just anybody who can create some sort of interruption or distraction. So I think it's important to have a conversation in setting some boundaries, carving out your own personal space and finding ways where you can actually manage being in that type of environment. Um, the other thing is, and I will mention this to, and you know, make myself available to everyone, is if you did have questions about getting organized, this is something that I personally love to do. So, you know, I'm always happy to meet with students in helping them with academic planning. Um, so, if that is something that's been an issue for you in the past, you can always reach out to me. I've helped students with things like overcoming procrastination, test anxiety, um, all of those sorts of things, and I'm happy to have a conversation if anybody needs help with that.
Can you answer one more for me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, obviously students will need their textbook and supplies. Uh, what would be best advice for them to handle both of those? Okay, so I know one of the major problems typically is that students don't know what textbooks they need until maybe a week or two before class. So if this is a concern for you, I would highly recommend that you reach out to the professors as soon as possible to find out that information. Um, that way, if you need to, you can be ordering textbooks in advance um, I know that the university does offer textbooks, um, and those can be either physical copies or the virtual, the ebook. And I would say if you can use the ebook, that that's probably going to be better, just in terms of accessibility, having quick access to it. And for me, I know that it makes it easy to search for whatever information that you need in there. If anybody does have any issues in tracking down their textbooks, just let me know. Um, but usually that information would be specified in the syllabus and that would be posted like we had mentioned earlier, either in Blackboard or on Canvas. Did you have anything to add to that? Um, no, you actually hit the nail on the head. <laughs> awesome, my okay. My only, my only, my only uh, compliment to that is do your very best not to wait to the last minute. Um, you know, you might be able to get some really, really good sales from the bookstore or even if you go to a third party vendor, um, but just do not wait till the last minute. You don't want to start this new environment to be fine. So try your very best to um, get, on the, get on top of these things as soon as possible. Awesome. Okay. So it looks like we do have some other questions. Let me see. Okay. So we did have a question come in. Um, we had talked about this briefly, but I don't know if the student was on at that point. Um, will the updated courses be uploaded on the student schedules? So yes, so the Office of Academic Scheduling is making those updates um, and they have quite a few, I think I estimated somewhere in the 40,000 ballpark um, that they have to go through. What's going to happen is that the Rucker schedule of classes will reflect the format of the class. So if you were to go on there and look at the School of Public Affairs and Administration right now, it actually shows physical locations, but that's not going to be the case. And what ends up happening is when the Office of Academic Scheduling makes a change, you're going to get an alert. Um, and some of you have actually already started reaching out to me about this. You'll get, you know, as many as, you know, as many classes that you take. And that alert is just indicating that there has been a change to the schedule, that the class has actually moved from being physically on campus to being offered remotely. Um, once the Office of Academic Scheduling makes that full update, you'll be able to see not only that the class is online, but also whether or not the class is synchronous versus asynchronous. And one thing, just keep in mind, that may not be reflected in web registration. So when you go look at the schedule, it may not show it. Um, so definitely go check the schedule of classes. And if you can't find it there, reach out to us. Um, the one thing that I want to reiterate that everyone has said, even though we cannot physically be in person together, we are still here to support you. We are still accessible. You know, we will do video conferences or phone calls or whatever uh, needs to happen in order for you to be connected to us. So, you know, the environment um, or this remote environment is still an opportunity for us to still have a strong interpersonal connection. So please make sure that you reach out to us. Um, we're going to probably send you just timely messages just to check in, make sure you're doing okay. I hope you all are seeing the quote of the week that uh, Ms. Jones had organizes and sends out every week just to kind of keep you guys encouraged and keep us actually all encouraged. And we're going to continue to keep your spirits up as you guys transition through this new environment. Okay, we have another question. Will this recording be available on the SPA website or the social media platforms? So, um, in the spirit of transparency, I neglected to record the first portion of this, um, which gave all the timely updates. The good part about the updates from enrollment services, student life, and technology is available on the My Run website, and that's myrun.new.rutgers.edu. Of uh, the town hall, yes, is being recorded. We will make this available. Um, and again, we definitely want you to take a look at the My Run website as well as the SPA website for any and all updates regarding the campus, our classes, 
Um, any announcements, we want you to make sure that you check both of those. Okay, great. And we have another question, and I think I can take an attempt at it and you can always add. So as a new SPA student, how will SPA assist students through scholarships or grants? So the School of Public Affairs and Administration does offer scholarships. Those are typically announced in the spring semester and then students would then get the award starting in the following fall semester. Um, so Dean Gibbs, would you like to speak a little bit more about that? Sure, so these scholarships, um, you actually have to have an established GPA. We will uh, send out communication to all students letting you know when the applications are available for you to apply. Uh, we definitely recommend that you do submit an application um, and be considered you have nothing to do by at least applying. Um, we try to support our students to the best of our abilities, especially when they matriculate into the graduate programs as well. Um, so we definitely want you to take advantage of the opportunities um, that we have available. Also, if you are a new um, transfer student or you are a high school student uh, who graduated from a Newark high school or you're a Newark resident, remember there is run to the top. So please make sure that you reach out to financial aid to see if you are eligible run to the top. Transfer students, please keep in mind this. You are eligible if you meet the income criteria for run to the top. Your run to the top scholarship can um, be jeopardized if you don't have your final transfer from your uh, college. So please make sure that that is all up to date so that you don't have any interruptions in your financial aid or your scholarship. Um, I know this is probably a lot, but again, if you do have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, and we can explain further. And I would also like to add, if you ever come across a scholarship opportunity and you want someone to let, write a letter of recommendation, I think, you know, Dean Menefield has always reiterated that we're the spa family. You know, don't hesitate to ask one of us to write a letter of recommendation for you. We're happy to do that as well. So it looks like that's all the questions for now. I know that we have a few minutes, so I did want to give students the opportunity to put in their questions. Alyssa, I'd like to add one more thing. The students, there's a lot of opportunities for you to participate and engage in the school. Just because we're remote doesn't remove those opportunities. When you request a letter of recommendation, the person that you're requesting it from needs to be able to say something about you. And one of the things they can say about you is you're very engaged, you were a spa ambassador, you were the senator for the school, or even just reaching out when there's uh, events. We frequently have events, we, we, we have hosts, we have hosts. So just making yourself available and showing some initiative, those are the sorts of things. If you were in my classroom, you know, there's all the soft skills. I want to be able to say you came to class on time, you turned your work in on time, you were aggressive about speaking in, in class. Um, and then I could talk about the quality of your work and I could talk about you as a person, you're kind. So you basically are writing your resume the whole time you, you're here, but you're also giving me everything I need to write a letter of a recommendation for you. So, don't rest on your laurels, show some initiative. It's too easy to just come here, get the grades and go, but it will be reflected. You, you know, people that read a lot of references, they can tell when somebody is really, I'll just give you one line. Uh, Dear John, I have been asked by Elizabeth La Petriello to, re to recommend her for this position. She was the best student I've ever had. Now, if that is the second sentence in your resume, they're going to now listen to see what you say. What made her the best? Then I'm going to say she showed the most initiative that I've ever had in a student. This is what she did, A, B, and C. She was the best writer that I've ever had. Here's a, a, an example from a sentence in one of her papers. That's how you separate yourself from other people. So I strongly encourage you to show initiative People want to see that you did something more than just go to class. So get involved with our activities. Yes, that's a great point. Dean Gibbs, yeah. I feel like you're going to say something. Yeah, I was, you know, and I, um, the Dean Mentor's point about activity on campus. We have a spa ambassador program that this time that uh, we're going to be recruiting students for. 
Um, we need folks who can help us make this place even better. Our ambassadors are going to be helping with recruitment and fundraising and programming, um, offering key insight um, on their experience and how we can begin to recruit students, how we can begin to shape the curriculum based on the student and you know, some of our employer needs. Um, and so that is a great avenue to be uh, impactful for school. Also, um, we have uh, campus-wide senators uh, that are part of the Student Government Association, as well as university-wide senators that represent SPA and, and all of our interests. So please make sure that, you're, that you get active on campus. Um, being active on campus and being connected to the campus community shapes your, um, your involvement and it shapes your experience and actually makes going to class more meaningful. Um, so please make sure that you, you do that um, so that you can kind of add on to your resume with this profession uh, by being uh, active on campus. Yeah, I think that both Dean Metafield and Dean Gibbs make some really great points. And I also wanted to mention that even on this call today, we have some students who will be brand new to the School of Public Affairs and Administration starting in the fall semester. Um, so I want to give them a welcome and also point out they're, they're highly engaged because they're here on this call today. Um, but, you know, you also can connect with some of the other students. You know, we're going to create opportunities for that to happen. Um, I know the Office of Student Life is also planning virtual events, so definitely, you know, participate in those. I think that it'll be a really robust semester. So we have only about a minute left. We haven't gotten any questions in a while, but I did still want to leave this open. Um, if there's any questions that have not been answered today, I did jot down those questions and I will be following up with those students. But as always, you can email me um, and I had put my name in the chat, but I'll do it again. So if anything comes up, feel free to email me. We've gotten a thank you. Thank you, Valerie. That was very kind of you. Oh, one thing, um, just in thinking back, and please mark your calendar for September 17th. We're going to have our welcome back event. Uh, and that would be a great way to get to see more of the SPA family, your peers, faculty, staff, administrators. So please um, attend if you can, and we'll send out details about that in the coming weeks. Awesome. All right, uh, Alyssa, any last thoughts? Well, I just want to say thank you all. We do realize that, you know, this is a transition and we just want to make sure that everybody feels supported. So please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any questions or concerns that come up. We're here for you. And thank you. Dean Medifield, have a great evening. All right. Thank you guys for attending. This means a lot to us. And again, we're here all summer long. Any questions, please feel to reach out. Have a wonderful evening and we'll see you soon.